Um, one of the other things that, that we have taken over in the last couple of years is facilitating all of the school buildings and coordinating um, everything that happens outside of the day school. So everything that happens before 7.30 in the morning and everything that happens after 3 o'clock in the afternoon is scheduled through community services. Um, a great deal of that programming is centered around the high school facility and if we were not located there um, I think it would be difficult for us to provide that service. But certainly, we could operate in any of the spaces. Questions for Sue? <coughs> I have a comment. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things, again, for the viewers at home and for the people in the audience, the thing about community services that we can remember is that fees are charged for most of the services um, that are offered that revenues uh, historically exceed expenses and that all of that money does revert to the town. Uh, so the schools do not take advantage of those uh, monies. It is kept within the program and does revert to the town. So I think that that's very important that although community services comes under the umbrella of the school department uh, in terms of accountability, that they really are the community and it really further uh, proves the point that our schools are community buildings. They are facilities that are used by uh, students uh, and by uh, ad other adults who are not in the school from 7.30 in the morning until 3.30 in the afternoon. I just have one other comment. Um, we do oversee senior citizen um, activities in the community. We, in fact, plan two programs a month. Um, that senior citizen population is growing. Um, we have over 250 members in our senior citizen club with about an average attendance at our meetings of in excess of 90 people. Um, those folks are using the high school. Um, they have lunch there at least once a month. Um, we have our meetings in the library or most recently most of them in the cafeteria because there's no other space that can really accommodate us. Um, and with this new reconfiguration of the, the third floor in the high school in that multi-purpose um, gym space or activity room, we certainly could utilize that space for some of our senior citizen programs as well. Other questions or comments? Okay. Um, I have a general question. We've had the vision meetings recently. Have there been any ideas that have come from those about what our school should look like in, in the future that we need to be considering as far as our plans for space? I'm not sure that the you know, topics that came up there, uh, well, I can, I can connect a couple of them uh, just to give you an example. One is the um, thread about improving and deepening relationships between parents and in school and the community at large. Obviously, certainly, um, I don't know if the senior citizens would like to go into the daycare center and the kindergarten rooms and read to the children, but I know that that certainly does happen. Um, and in, uh, in plenty of wonderful models about community and school cooperation, uh, those kinds of contacts are seen as strengthening communities and use of the building as well as understanding the program. So I would think a number of things, parents uh, and non-parents in the community who might might, uh, might be strengthened by that. Uh, but as far as the educational programs in general, um, I think uh, some of the conversations that I've had with our librarians um, and other staff members, uh, we badly need to think of our libraries, whether they're in on Cove or middle school or high school, as um, very core facilities that incorporate technology for the information age. Um, the high school is beginning to do that. There's a data bank uh, uh, computer there now that the high school students are beginning to learn how to use, and it's a first step in what I see as educationally a real issue. That's going to have to teach children how to do intellectually respectable research, probably beginning in the third or fourth grade when they start little reports. So that um, in the concept of a remodeled middle school, uh, there is certainly an opportunity to rethink what the media center could look like. That could happen in renovation too. It doesn't necessarily have to be that. But you can also shape a building that makes a, puts, you know, it's a library in the center of the building and says this is our art. 
and it is wired with a whole bunch of things in mind for net mission and access to a database of a variety of things. Those are just two examples. Any other questions or comments uh, that the board would like to make about any of the options? I have a question on from Frank Walker on the B11. On can you just explain the site cost a little? Originally, site cost for any of the other options was about three hundred thousand. Right. Um, now I see middle. I see middle school related improvements. That would be uh, things like a new, new a new ball field, that kind of thing. Yeah. Being those kind of. Yeah. Probably issue talking the diagram. Um, when we were looking at the um, other schemes, essentially the site costs were going to happen right in here. And um, they were going to be modifications of the extended parking. We knew we had to pick up additional parking spaces and then we were going to place the lines here. So that then resulted in that number. I think it was. Three hundred thousand dollars, um, and and we know that there are some variables in there. For example, we don't know how much they can actually save in this in future detailed work. Um, the way we achieved the site cost for the modified one is we have looked at a number of our other schools that have finished um, in the same size range. So and then we we looked at their site characteristics. Thought that was a safe way to do it because, for example, right now we don't know what the budget characteristics out there. Uh, we know that this will be an EDP project, and we don't know about retention and other kinds of um, necessary um, site work. So it's, it, it really became a planning number that we thought was safe. But in that number would be included um, the excavation work necessary to move the building. Uh, we've got parking over in this area, new entry drives. Uh, the bus loop, and then rebuilding the field um, over on this side um, where, the, where the building is located. We also um, will be able to pick up the changes that we think are appropriate around high school, including a uh, drop off for the kindergarten community services area, and then development of a new entry point at the high school building itself. So it's a much more extensive um, site attitude covering, in fact, much greater compared to the surface area covered earlier with what would be covered in that modified number that was a much greater surface area. Does, does that include at all any expanded um, playground space for the kindergarten program at the high school? Um, we weren't specifically focusing on that, but I think that the, the budget is going to be partly as possible because it's so this plan also eliminates the present industrial arts wing. It, it's right there. Oh, it's still there. Is it still there or taken oh, off? I'm sorry. This is where it's located. Uh, and that proposal was outlined. It was to um, try to make a clean um, new middle school for as much as possible. Connect the new building with the 1930s and the and the gym. I can't see. Yeah, that. The, we we had outlined um, links, oh. and at, and at this point we really don't know. It might be smarter in fact to reconfigure um, a number of interior rooms and literally blend the two together. But that's a lot of detail planning. We really can't do at this point. Really in the process. I would say though that whether it's done by um, connectors or the government. Yeah, um, you know, the opportunity 
your real tightness connectedness in the building is, is really here in the conference. Really stretch out. Thank you. Other questions or comments? <coughs> But the people here have been very patient waiting while the board asked their questions. Um, is there anybody here from the public that would like to, to speak this evening? <coughs> Come on up to the podium and, and give us your name and, and uh, um, My name is Lynn Lovett and I'm here as the concerned parent of a, a seventh grader this year. Um, I have two high school students who are very, very different than my seventh grader, just because all children are different, but um, my son, who is a freshman in high school this year, is so different than he was in August. Um, it's amazing to me. Um, I'm also a baby boomer. Um, I went to kindergarten in 1953 in a um, vacant supermarket building in Fayetteville, New York. Um, I don't remember any particular trauma entering the elementary school as a first grader. I'm also very nervous. I'll get over this. <laughs> um, and then as a fourth grader, um, my town went through a big boom. And I spent fourth grade going to school half a day in the morning the first semester and half a day in the afternoon the second semester. We were on split sessions for an entire year. Um, so I'm a product of what, what we're going through again. Um, I'm concerned with, and I appreciate Nancy Hutton's comments about just the social aspects. I think academically the problems would be few, but I'm very concerned about my eighth grader who is already emulating so many of the things that the older kids do now, just being placed in that proximity to the high school. Um, it's a real concern for me. Um, our kids are growing up so fast and are exposed to so much already that I, as a parent, am not comfortable with. I'd like to delay the high school process for one more year, if possible. Um, and I like the middle school concept the way it is now. I, I like five through eight together. Um, I think it's an appropriate grouping. Um, those are basically my concerns. I'd, I'd like the eighth grade to stay in the middle school. and and the high school be 9 through 12. I think the kindergarten with the daycare program in place already is um, an easier move. And had I, if I had a kindergarten student, I'm, I'm sure my feelings would be mixed. But I also had my, my now seventh grader was um, one of, in the early days of the uh, uh, extended day program in the high school. And it's a wonderful program. And um, the kids are nurtured by the high school students who participate in the program. I think it's a wonderful experience for the high school students. Um, I think it's less dangerous for a kindergartner to be in a high school setting than it is for an eighth grader to be in a high school setting. And where there's already that facility in place for the younger children, I think it's a, a natural transition if there has to be one at all. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Other comments? John Norton. Uh, my concern is a safety factor right now. Uh, renovations are needed desperately. The quicker, the better. It's been stated that they aren't yet life-threatening. Uh, I think it's sooner than anybody really th is considering. Uh, my son's been injured twice in the last year by fixtures from the school, which have, are in disrepair. Uh, Last April, he was hit by a ceiling light that fell out of the ceiling. And most recently, while going down the stairway, he was injured by something as simple as a handrail uh, and received a large splinter that Dr. Foray, much to my son's happiness, was on duty. <laughs> um, that railing, I went back last week to talk to my son's class about a, a scoop, scuba diving equipment in the oceans and stuff. Yeah, that railing has been sanded. It was sanded that afternoon, and that's where it's been left. Uh, there's no poly on it as of last week. Um, that rail was not sanded. It's 
probably a three inch by two inch piece that's been repaired. Um, it would, my concern is that whatever choice is made, that the safety of the children be considered and that it be as soon as possible. Uh, we moved here because we heard that the town of Cape Elizabeth had an excellent education program. It does have an excellent education program, but it's falling apart around our ears. And something really should be done. And I think the, the children, regardless, as it was stated, not always cheaper is better. And I think as far as the children are concerned, that's a very accurate statement. Thank you. Other comments? My name is Suzanne Gannon. Um, I have a four and a half year old right now. So obviously he'll be ready for kindergarten in the fall. We haven't heard a real lot in my mind tonight about the kindergartners. And I don't know if that's just something that we haven't gotten to yet. I have a lot of questions about that. Um, Initially, the blending of the um, extended daycare with the, the kindergartners doesn't appeal to me. I haven't heard that much about it, but initially it doesn't. I see these children as having two very different mindsets, a child who's in school and a child who's on his off time. And that, philosophically to me, doesn't blend all that well. Um, I'm <laughs> um, I'd like to know also what involvement the kindergarten teachers would have with the extended daycare. To me, those are two very separate jobs also. And um, what physical adjustments um, to the classrooms do you see being able to be completed by the fall? That's about it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. Is there a, a, any more explanation? When we talk about blending kindergarten with extended day, um, do we actually mean, um, what do we mean by that? <laughs> well, obviously, um, we have two separate programs. There's no question about that. Um, I think one of the very big pieces of this is our kindergarten staff um, needs to be an integral part uh, problem solving and thinking through and working with a number of issues um, and I know that this is um, I have every confidence and ability to do that uh, our intent my intent is superintendent our intent I'm sure from a board point of view is to offer the kind of nurturing support that makes that possible uh, the immediate reaction of kindergarten staff of course is you know, we like what we are, and there is a, a sense of rhythm here that we're in the beginning of the school. We understand that. On the other hand, having sat through two hours of explanations tonight, including the comments that were just made, my comments about my personal deep concerns about the general condition of the majority of the building that our children are in school in, I see it is my obligation to tell the community this is a very, very big problem that has to be addressed. Um, Therefore, there are going to be pieces that aren't going to fit, and I think that hopefully we've had enough information tonight to see what the big picture is. Nobody, I think, uh, everybody involved, let's put it this way, everybody involved is extremely interested in what happens to these children. Um, the educational program is critical and it needs to be thought through. We want to know from the kindergarten staff what they need. Now, what they, if, they, if the answer is we need nothing but being where we are, but I have high confidence in our ability to sit down and look at this and figure out what are our options. And frankly, we just want to know from teachers what are the best things um, we, we can do uh, if that is the option that is chosen. I also have a high degree of confidence in community services um, to look at these kinds of models that are out there uh, in the country now about um, what are the logical touching places for uh, community services kinds of programs and academic programs and where are they different and how do we work our way through a variety of communication uh, services.
certification issues. I mean, we're not at, we're not at remotely suggesting that these all be put in one big pot and everybody does the same thing. Um, but what we really want, I mean, I think it's an interesting opportunity. I mean, in Pollyanna, sometimes challenges really are opportunities, and I would think that this one has many of that, uh, many of those characters. One of the things that, that <clears throat> isn't clear, I don't think, is for the fall, mm -hmm. that's a separate decision that, is it not, than the option that we choose for the future? I mean, when is the decision going to be made as far as who goes to the high school in the fall? Well, let me, uh, one of the criteria that I had uh, pointed out was facilitate the ongoing educational program while renovations are being completed. If the, if the choice were to move the kindergarten this fall and the fourth grade back into Pond Cove, there would be no other moves, none, except for the moves that would occur gradually as, for instance, if this were the option. They would start with new construction, and life would go on as it's going on right now, four, five through eight, and two, one, two, and three, okay? As new construction is finished, the appropriate grades would move out of the old construction into the new space. That would be their only move. There would then be consideration of moving students uh, in the renovated area. That might be a two-move phase. I'm sorry, you're talking about the kindergarten starting in the fall of the year. If the, if the kindergarten moved to the high school, that would be a decision that they would move once. We would have to do enough renovation to make that appropriate in the fall and then we would, uh, if, we, if we couldn't finish it all, we would have to have a program of finishing it. But that would be that move. Uh, obviously, as far as kindergarten is concerned, again, conceivably, if the number of, of uh, primary students shrunk to the point where all of our K-4 students could fit into Pond Cove, that would bring up another issue. But as long as the numbers were not, uh, were, were too large to fit into Pond Cove. If we move the eighth grade um, and start a renovation program, we can't start a renovation program with just moving one grade because we have to move one grade because uh, there isn't room enough for them, so we have to move two grades. So for a while, we have to stop the seventh and eighth grade into the high school. And we probably would not want to, if the long range choice were to move some of them back, we would not want to spend the money to do the kind of rehabbing to have enough classrooms so that would become a pretty near crisis situation just in order to get started in renovation. Uh, I, I could go on about that whole thing, but I think that's enough to give you a sense that the neatest, cleanest move as far as criteria number three is moving the high every kindergarten. Well, wouldn't we uh, basically want to make the decision and either put the eighth grade and the seventh grade in high school or the kindergarten? I think you pretty much have to, in the sense of long range. way, you would just incur a lot more expense and trouble. So I think the answer to the question is, yes, we're going to make this decision, and in all likelihood, that's going to set us on a path. That's right. Which we will not get off unless something extraordinary happens. So that would be... Forgetting I'm not sure. Definitely not. Well, I hate to bring up the B word, but the other part that we have to consider is that next month we start the budget. And many of the decisions that we're going to make, we are going to have to present to the town council as soon as the end of January. So we have uh, a real timeline, as the superintendent brought out, uh, and we also have a real uh, financial decision to make, which is going to have a direct bearing on whatever the decision is that's made uh, for the movement in September. Ready? I have a question as a kindergarten teacher. I'm, I'm Deborah Pearson. Um, if there's a suggestion long term down the road that we're headed towards all day kindergarten, is there enough room at the high school for us to move towards that goal? Certainly, given the numbers we have now, that's where the room will be. Um, obviously, the uh, schemes, for instance, for keeping the kindergarten in Pond Cove, which included, um, for the most part, the just keeping K, for instance, the K-4, the 5 grade, uh, and we were concerned about the need to add extra classrooms and that there was a 
you mentioned about an oversaturated building that clearly was not taken into consideration there might be an all day kindergarten, so that would compound that problem. It would almost make it impossible. Um, which, you know, arguably it's not a decision that anybody's made, maybe that's, mm -hmm. that everybody could be comfortable with that. Um, the best option for building in an uncertain factor like that would be the high school. Hello, my name is Judy Lardner, and I apologize I missed the first part of the meeting because I was in another meeting in town hall. Um, I'm also a, a mother of a kindergarten student next year, and I know you all have the interest of all students in mind, but I feel as a parent of this age group, we're very underrepresented because we're not involved in the system. I'm As the parent of a first grader, I will have been doing this, and I understand the way it operates a little bit more but I would definitely want the board and the superintendent to consider whatever ramica ramifications you have with um, the trauma that a lot of children experience going into kindergarten and then getting used to that and then they move to yet another school and I'm not an expert on early childhood education and I can offer no insights but I really hope that that's taken into consideration because of all the problems we have, have with education now and I'd hate to get our kids started on a very shaky footing that might cause problems down the road but I do um, urge you good luck on this very difficult decision um, Bob Weimann I'm also the parent of a to-be kindergartner and I think there is a truth in the fact that there may be an underrepresentation of uh, folks like ourselves in that position because we're not yet in the system and perhaps not as tuned into the uh, <coughs> the networking that would get us here tonight to express our views uh, I share some of the same concerns that have been expressed about uh, getting children off to a right start and I'm also something that I think a reality is that if in fact the kindergarten was to be moved to a high school setting um, the whole issue of funds and what is or is not going to be available what was mentioned about playground and uh, the architect mentioned that that hadn't really been considered yet but you know there's some flexibility here and there but playground spaces uh, media, ce media <coughs> center spaces uh, art facilities the music facilities uh, the teachers to be able to the availability of the special instruction that's going to be needed there's a price tag associated with all those items and I'm not sure especially if the budget's coming up I think that's something that would have to be looked at seriously in terms of uh, making sure that next year's children whether it be eighth graders or kindergartners don't get shortchanged in that first transitional year or the second transitional year or whatever it might have to be thank you other questions <coughs> hi my name is Leslie Knowlton I'm a teacher and a parent and a lot has been said tonight about the eighth grade and their social and emotional well-being I would like to speak to a five-year-old social and emotional well-being. I just want you to, to remind you that they have a very difficult time with transitions. And again, I feel that they would have a hard time making a transition, going to a completely different school, the high school, and then again to Clon Cove School. And second, I just have a question. I guess I should direct it to Frank Miles. It was um, asked, um, do you know of any uh, 8 through 12 high schools. I was wondering, does anyone know of any um, 9 through 12 high school with kindergarten in it as well? Uh, I know of, of high schools that have, uh, sometimes for just limited <coughs> purposes of time, uh, housed uh, kindergarten, some you know, more successful than others, depending on how much uh, facilitation our own high school of course was used uh, you know it's, it's always been stated Frank? I know I know of uh, you know high school kindergartens I know of quite a number of high schools that have daycare <coughs> schools that's not uncommon that they're frequently part of vocational high school programs that's true 
there's a good deal of daycare. Okay. But not just daycare, but sometimes a combination. I know nationally of some attempts, deliberate attempts, to wrap the, uh, to make it less confusing to the four-year-old and even the five-year-old to wrap the daycare and the kindergarten experience directly together for that very purpose. Um, and in fact, I know of uh, read some, I don't know the person that I've read about in some efforts to uh, have grants to, to, to encourage community service and various community uh, agencies to work together with the school. I have both personal and professional experience as far as that age is concerned and I won't go into the reasons why but my son was in one place for preschool another for kindergarten another for first grade and then came here in second grade and had no trouble with the transitions at all he, I, I don't think he's an exception to the rule I think what made the transitions okay um, were the ways in which the adults handled it and, and the caring and the nurturing and the kindness. And um, I, I don't think it was where he was as much as the people that he was with. And that, that happens to be my own personal experience as far as that's concerned. Okay. This, this may be a premature question, but um, it's my understanding that all these um, you know, plans that we're trying to make, it is uh, contingent on whether the citizens of Cape Elizabeth accept or reject this. Is that true? Through a bond? The issue of somebody moving as a space consideration, um, unfortunately, is not mm -hmm. contingent on that. Whether that becomes a single movement isolated from everything else, uh, something you know, does have to happen because we have a problem. Um, whether the, uh, the the move becomes part of a package and the decision the board makes that starts to, tries to set in motion a package that has to go out to the community, which of course is anybody's guess. I guess the my my concern is that if the package doesn't pass, um, where the funding for who would move and what kinds of renovations would be made would be. I think um, as a teacher, I'm concerned about the kind of academic programming that I would be able to offer in a substandard space that hasn't been adequately renovated is of considerable concern to me. Um, so that's one thing. I don't know how that could be solved or if there's a, a, a C1 plan or a B1 plan for that. But, um, Sub two or <laughs> but the, I think that the, the thought that has gone into these things is evident and the kinds of ways that people have tried to make some difficult decisions is admirable and I, I just want to let you guys know that I think the kindergarten staff will assist in any way that we can in order to make this, this work, whatever works. Um, thanks. Ted, I appreciate hearing you. Thank you. Is there an answer to that? Well, I have to say, you know, pragmatically, of course I, you know, thought about that one. I think what we, what I, I will advise the board to make in January decision is the best path that you can come up with and go to the public and try hard to um, work this through. But I certainly understand the realities of the situation. I think at the time we accept that uh, or, or try to get that package together, it is probably going to be necessary for us to make a subscript decision, which is, um, given a lack of funding, because we certainly aren't going to be putting a budget together that has uh, room for uh, extensive renovations of any building, it's going to have to come through bonding, uh, we would have to say which of the various options is simply putting people somewhere and where they will get, um, you know, a decent educational experience. And that, I think, is part of that decision. Other questions or comments? Uh, my name is Kathleen Egan. I didn't think that I was going to be speaking about this issue tonight at all, but the number of people who have gotten up and spoken about their kindergartners to be really makes me need to say something. Um, I feel that we're not underrepresented in the school system. In fact, almost all of us here have had 
kindergartners, um, m most of the people in this room. Um, I have a child in uh, fifth grade now and also another son about to be in kindergarten next year. And um, I also had the experience of my older child having been in nursery school in one place, kindergarten in another school, and first grade in Cape Elizabeth. It was not a difficult transition. Um, I think that age group is an adaptable age group. Um, I think that it's interesting to hear that 90% of our entering kindergarten class has been through uh, preschool to some degree. And that says a lot about socialization of the kids in this community and their readiness for school. Um, I also have great confidence in the, um, the staff, the kindergarten staff in the school system. And I think that um, what I feel is most important in considering this transition or, or change is the facility, um, having the facility completely ready. Not a matter of next year we'll do the classrooms, the following year the playground, the following year the media center. I think the kindergarten uh, move to be successful needs to have uh, it's, it's the facilities in place and that will help make it a, a successful and workable um, uh, move. Um, what I do want to say just sort of for the record <laughs> is um, that my son in the fifth grade um, is handicapped and handicapped accessibility has been um, a big big issue for our family in the school system. Uh, one that we've struggled with uh, every year since um, he entered the school system. Um, we feel at this point that we have a number of people in this town who recognize um, the need for a system-wide or rather town-wide um, approach to handicapped accessibility. It's been pointed out many times by many people here tonight how much our buildings are used by the entire town and it raises questions in my mind about senior citizens using our buildings um, and how accessible they are. It is true that our high school is not yet handicapped accessible. That somebody coming into the building um, literally has to go and, and find the elevator and, and have someone standing there with the key and then when they get in there they can't uh, reach the elevator buttons if they're in a wheelchair. There are problems that um, really need to be addressed now and not in 1997 and 98. And I'm a little bit concerned about the uh, school space study plan and the timetable. Um, because these are not uh, really um, issues which can be put off and I understand the complexity of, all, of, of uh, making these changes and moves and I just want to underscore the fact that these are, as Connie has said, these are very important issues that need to be considered now and at budget time in January. This uh, school system is 11 years out of compliance with handicaps accessibility uh, requirements which uh, for which 1980 was the last possible time you could squeak under um, the law. So we are really way out of line and, and could at any time be uh, closed down um, for, for the lack of modifications which have been made. Thank you. <coughs> Other comments? My name is Jill Blackwood and I teach seventh grade and I don't want this to seem the slightest bit territorial like my classroom's worse than your classroom were. But I think when I was a, a parent of a preschooler, um, I would have been concerned about what was going to happen next year when my child came to kindergarten. But I would like to invite those preschool parents whose children are entering kindergarten next year to come see the middle school because their child will ser soon come to us and to really see some of the problems that we're dealing with too. So they have, as they said, so they're completely informed and know the range of the problems. Um, a water source is a big, a really big issue that we have three science classrooms that are just regular classroom classrooms and have no water source other than that which we're catching in buckets that's coming through the ceiling. And, and that's not a joke. I mean, it's a joke, but it's not a joke. It's really happening. And uh, no electrical outlets to plug in the microscope so that when my class uses microscopes, one microscope to every two students, I bring three extension cords from home and borrow two projector carts from the library because they have those little row of four plugs on the side so that I can multiply the electrical outlets to use them. And since I have no water source over Thanksgiving, I took home two L.L. Bean bags full of glassware and tinted the inside of my dishwasher blue with the chemicals <laughs> or the glassware that I had to wash off because I have no other place to wash 
the beakers and the test tubes and things like that. So that, you know, that we all have our problems. Mine are not isolated, but I think it would really be helpful if the parents who, um, who are thinking this year about kindergarten and what that might mean to their child, think about what it also means to their child every, every year thereafter um, so they have a complete picture of the situation. I'd just like to make a comment. Uh, it's been mentioned there is a preponderance of uh, parents of uh, middle school children on this board, uh, and I think it's uh, I think it's evident to anybody who has done what uh, Joe Black would suggest that uh, the middle school is in uh, the worst shape uh, of all our buildings. But uh, nevertheless, uh, I, I think that uh, for my own part, and I think I can speak for the board that. Every parent ought to be assured that once we're elected, we represent everybody. And I'll illustrate that with, uh, with a story. Shortly after the recent election, a parent came to me who had worked very hard for some of the other candidates. And I was pleased that uh, this parent would share a problem with me because the parent knew that once the election was over, I represented everybody, including her. And the next morning, I was in uh, an administrator's office discussing the particular issue. And I think we're all going to react that way. We're all going to do the best we can for every single child in this district. We have to think K-12. I, I have an anecdotal comment and then a uh, follow-up to Peter's, and that is, Although I've been a very strong advocate for a 5-8 middle school, I do want everyone who's listening to know that neither of my children will benefit from that. Uh, the other thing that I would like you to know is there is an, also a, a group that seems a bit underrepresented uh, tonight, and I'm get, glad Kathleen had an opportunity to address it. Um, perhaps the three speakers tonight um, are having their eldest child enter kindergarten. Um, and that may have something to do with some of the comments. Uh, I had the opportunity, since it was a snow day today, to be at home uh, with a telephone. I called many uh, parents who have uh, current kindergarten, uh, current children in kindergarten, and first graders, and asked them if they were entering the school system and their child was at the high school, uh, would it uh, bother them? And the difference is that these people have already seen the kindergarten program that we have and realize that it can be taught uh, anywhere. In fact, one person suggested um, the cafeteria, but I assured them that that would never happen. Uh, <coughs> I felt safe in making that assurance. Um, one of the things uh, that I would like to say is that a, a parent of a, uh, there are uh, children that are currently in the first grade and in kindergarten in this family. And the, the child, uh, both children, had come from uh, Ledgemere. And I asked him what his biggest problem was uh, with the Cape Schools. And what he said was the playground. That when his child came to Pond Cove after being at Ledgemere, i sorry, I said Ledge, but I meant Ledgemere, um, that his child sat for weeks uh, crying and by himself because he could not acclimate himself to the very large uh, population of Pond Cove kids using the playground. Uh, so I thought that it was quite appropriate that uh, in this plan we are actually uh, going to uh, have a playground that is appropriate for the five-year-old as opposed to trying to have a playground that's uh, appropriate for a five-year, uh, five to eight-year-old. So I, 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 that's kind of anecdotal, but I just wanted to add that. And I think that that group, uh, with the exception of Kathleen, uh, hasn't spoken tonight, and I do hope that uh, I, I hear from them more. Any other comments from the public? Sir. <coughs> uh, my name is Susan Mitchell. I just have um, one comment. I don't know, it's an more of an architectural um, design comment, I guess. I'm hoping that um, Frank Miles said that the, he'd be losing eight classrooms, but it's my understanding he would also be losing an entrance to a high school uh, by creating a second entrance. Is this correct? 
general idea was that um, since the community services in kindergarten would essentially be occupying the end of the third floor and would, would be on both sides of the current entryway, then it would be wiser to redirect the high school entryway to come in adjacent to the library at the second level. Okay, that, that is a, um, that's something that I, I hope that you will look at carefully because the school is designed uh, with the entryway to be the focus of the high school. And um, if you're up there in the morning right now, the current conditions are with traffic guards and, and traffic being rerouted, it's very confusing for the high school kids and for parents who are dropping off their kids at 7.30 in the morning. That is the entrance to the high school. I think it's great that we're considering schools to be community schools, but that is a high school with 400 kids in it and 400 plus uh, as years go down. And these kids need to feel uh, that this is the entrance uh, to their high school. It's not something that, it's a, that they're not, that they're excluded from uh, certain hours or that they're not even invited to use at all. That clearly is a very wide uh, sidewalk area going up to several doors and with the office space and the guidance area. That's a place that kids feel very comfortable during the days, uh, during the day to talk to their teachers or the guidance counselors or uh, things that they may need to do in the office area. And that's something that will be uh, sorely missed, I think, if you eliminate that entrance for the high school kids uh, at all times of the day. And I hope that you will seriously look at that. Uh, this is a high school uh, situation and that is clearly the best entrance for 400 kids entering that school, and that is where they do enter in the morning hours. Thank you. Uh, your comments, uh, just to pick up on that, uh, of the relationship between guidance and administration and entry are, are I think, entirely right on. Um, the notion about redirecting the entry to the second level is also tied with then relocating guidance and administration. Whole series of changes that were coordinated. Um, I, th I think one of the big issues is that the site right now is the site traffic, and in fact, this is on a small uh, on a knoll, does direct the initial impressions of the building toward that door. I think that to really do the job completely, one needs to think of, of how the sidewalks work, where the drop offs are, and and then any kind of planting or other modifications that are really more um, directed in their nature to really happen out here. So I think it really to be done right goes beyond simply relabeling and, and um, opening the doors and some doors, et cetera. Uh, uh, so I do agree with you on that. Well, thank you. I'm, we're a little over, but we started late with the public input. Um, Please remember that at the December and January school board meetings, there will be time for public input as well as January 21st, um, plus calling board members or the superintendent's office or writing or however you want to address um, your concerns. But, but we welcome your input. Thank you for coming tonight.